There, there's a couple of questions I see there uh, that are raising a, a really important issue, and I've talked about uh, stormwater and the importance of that. Uh, as a cause or contributing factor to a, a lot of the slope instability. So it, it's really important how uh, property owners manage water and, and making sure that it gets safely down to the bottom of slopes instead of sitting up at the top. Um, obviously, uh, the Ministry of Transportation has a role to play in this as a, as a property owner. They own the roads uh, with, within the uh, the subdivisions in Saltaire, um, as they do in the rest of the regional district. So we've been talking with the uh, Ministry of Transportation already um, about this. Uh, we've given them the report with the the findings that are in there because uh, it, it affects their infrastructure as well. Um, and uh, we've also uh, following the uh, the recommendations from Stantec and Palmer's report uh, ha have. Uh, Got and uh, recommendations from the uh, the CBRD board of directors to uh, look at stormwater management planning um, in Saltaire and in other areas, and that would uh, have to be in partnership with the Ministry of Transportation. I can speak to that a little bit. Um, this is a bylaw amendment to the CVRD's official community plan for the electoral areas. So it does not cover the areas under the authority or jurisdiction of the municipalities, and that's why it is limited to Saltaire. I'll add to that that uh, we have uh, shared the report with uh, both North Cowichan and Lady Smith because obviously these bluffs extend um, into their jurisdiction, so they're uh, interested in, in uh, following up to, to do similar work there. And we are looking at other areas of the CVRD that that folks mentioned too, where we see similar landforms. Um, so. The public information meeting is, um, it is intended to share the report to hear back from you. Um, as we mentioned, the bylaw has had 1st reading only. Um, it is subject to changes. Um, right up until adoption. So, uh, this is the opportunity for residents to review provide comments now also provide comments at the June. Second meeting, there'll be a third um, opportunity after that. So this is part of the, the consultation process. Um, I'm happy to respond to that as well. It is a hazard area. Um, I, I note that our um, chief building inspectors online here. Um, I believe that the bylaw has been written that they'll be considered within um, a, a three month period maximum. The applications for this one once approved more slowly. Uh, yeah, that, that's a great idea. There is uh, a recommendation to that effect uh, in uh, the, the report uh, and uh, it points to some resources from the stewardship center for BC that uh, gives some ideas of uh, plants that are appropriate to, to plant on the banks and there's uh, folks uh, locally that are experts in, uh, in that kind of thing that uh, would be happy to provide advice too. Clarify um, a building permit. The the length of time on the development uh, permit. Um, I'm not sure on what that is right now. And I note that our general manager is here online. If she'd like to respond to that, and Cheroff. Hi there. Um, sorry, I'm not on camera, but, um, yeah, so, so I have been processing a lot of, um, development permits. Um, technically I, I would say that if it's a good application, so it's an application that's supported with a proper, uh, geotechnical report and all the required information that that's an application that could be processed in as little as 2 weeks. Um, ultimately, though, it really depends on the volume of applications that we're receiving. So it can take. I would say up to uh, a three months at most. That's your window. Thank you. Yeah, I can perhaps speak to that. 
Oftentimes the development permit um, guidelines uh, set out in the official community plan establish a certain level of expertise that's required in order to fully address the development permit. So oftentimes landscape um, architects are required and um, and that is just to ensure that the, you know, the professional standards of certain associations are, are achieved. I, um, if I could respond to that, it, it would depend on it. They don't have to do anything if they're, uh, if it's status quo, if they're not um, planning on any kind of alteration, but as Alex explained in, in her slide, if, if they do want to alter, then, um, then the process as outlined in in the presentation is required, but if someone is not wanting to do any renovations at this point in time, then this is informing um, everyone of what would have to happen if such process was happening or a rebuild of a potential building. Uh, it, I guess that would uh, depend in part on uh, whether the slide is uh, within the right of way or on the uh, uh, individual property. So it would either be the responsibility of the, uh, the property owner or the Ministry of Transportation. Is that, that's one of the unique things within the regional district is all the roads are the responsibility of the province. They're owned by the province. So they take care of the, uh, uh, the issues like that. So we do uh, work with them whenever we can. I think I can try to answer that question. I would say that yes, it's, it certainly depends on what is being proposed in the development permit application, but both the guidelines do allow for a review of, of impacts on offsite structures. So off of the actual subject property. And then I think the, um, the engineer study that's required is to support the development permit application. What would also likely take that into account the impacts on off site. Yes, sorry, I, I was trying to address both of those that uh, they, they speak to the stormwater issue and, and it's a matter of, uh, of working uh, with Ministry of Transportation uh, in, in cases where it's the, the roads and the ditches that are uh, play a big role in the drainage. Okay, I don't see any other questions popping up. I am cognizant of the fact that we still have quite a few folks we haven't heard from. Perhaps folks are just listening in. Um, so, but if you haven't already, please do type in a question to the Q&A box. We're reading every single one. Oh, here we go. Thanks, Susan. My last experience with the Ministry of Transportation was not positive on the drainage from Chimenez Road to my property. I wish you luck with them. <laughs> Sounds like a slow process for everyone. Ruth's asking, is this session being recorded and how might we access it again? Maybe Lauren, you can speak to that. Uh, thanks. I'll try to speak to that. The the slides uh, for this evening session um, will be posted on the CVRD website, so they they will be available. And perhaps how might they review the answers to the Q and A? I guess to clarify the, uh, the landslides that were identified, uh, date back up to 500 years based on the, uh, the evidence that they were able to, uh, tease out from the, uh, the LIDAR. Uh, the most recent one was, uh, around 2016, uh, near the, uh, the, um, Davis lagoon. So it's, it's an ongoing process there. They are still occurring, um, and are expected to, uh, to continue occurring into the future. So that's, uh. That's why we're uh, dealing with the, uh, the issue now that we're aware of it. Yeah, the, as Corley and I explained earlier under the, an official community plan, uh, the local government can designate certain areas as development permit areas for, and if there are special circumstances that justify that. And in this case, um, you know, we're well aware of the potential hazards associated with the um, salt air bluffs because of the recent study, as well as the sort of historical knowledge. And so it is the local government's responsibility to, to do that, um, to address that. And the, one of the best tools that um, are available to us, the best planning tools are development permit areas. 
and um, they are set out under provincial legislation in the Local Government Act. And um, the, the process is really to establish um, guidelines that must be met. And it is the homeowner's responsibility to um, meet those guidelines uh, prior to undertaking any of the you know, construction related activities on the property. And um, so that is the process that uh, the CVRD is proposing to address this uh, potential hazard in, in Saltaire. Thank you, Ali. The geotechnical report should be addressing some of that as well. Uh, Jeff, you want to? Would you like to add to that? Uh, I, I guess I can uh, get, can touch on a little bit. I mean, in, in general, the the principle is that uh, you should be dealing with. Uh, stormwater on your own property. So if you're putting in impervious surfaces like buildings and driveways, you need to account for that runoff and deal with it uh, somehow capturing it uh, on the property. And there's lots of uh, techniques that can be done with that. Uh, we don't have <clears throat> very much drainage infrastructure. Um, it, you know, in Saltaire, we don't have a, a CVRD drainage function or, or anything like that. So, uh, uh, the the idea is to try to drain or deal with it as much as possible on your property. Uh, sometimes, uh, because of the topography, the the lay of the land, that that's very challenging. Uh, and sometimes it is uh, just a matter that uh, property owners have to deal with uh, a, as a civil matter between property owners. Um, and, and then it, it's also the the case of uh, dealing with the Ministry of Transportation, as a lot of people have identified uh, in, in terms of keeping uh, flows on your own property uh, and uh, trying to keep uh, make sure that the ditches are are able to deal with the flows on the roads. But I, I guess uh, it, it can be, and, and it's also a. Uh, as Ali had mentioned, in terms of the the green shores uh, for planning, it is something that uh, is really encouraged. Uh, so, so sometimes um, hard infrastructure solutions like a, a seawall or, or some sort of uh, retaining wall um, can be beneficial. Uh, sometimes they have a lot of unintended consequences uh, on a, adjacent areas. So. Uh, it, there, there's a lot that can be done to try to, to minimize erosion, and that's an area where you, the property owners really should be looking at, at getting a professional to come in and look at the big picture about uh, how, how to protect against the erosion. And, and yes, recognizing that uh, with sea level rise, it will be uh, an issue in areas where it hasn't necessarily been uh, previously. Um, that is uh, a changing landscape. And um, we we're not speaking on behalf of uh, the home insurers, um, but it it would be best to have someone from the actual insurance industry um, describe what's happening in in that realm at this time. So I don't believe we have the um, enough information to address that specifically. Thanks, Carly. I guess I would um, answer that uh, similarly to how Jeff answered an earlier question. It really depends on where those culverts are located. If they're located within the Ministry of Transportation's right of way, then it would be fully within the, the ministry's jurisdiction to do so. And if it is within the um, private property realm, then it would be the private property owner's responsibility to do that. Yeah, I believe oftentimes that is a, a civil matter between property owners, I'm afraid. Yeah. It Nuisance law. Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone for your questions. I want to thank the panelists for providing comments um, off the cuff. I want to thank Stantec for joining us as well. And thank you all who've joined as participants. Um, over 40 folks have called in. Really appreciate you spending your time learning more about how this will affect your property. Um, keeping in touch with what's going on the CVRD. It's really, really valuable to tell your neighbors about the June 2nd meeting if they aren't, weren't in attendance today. Thank you those who've hosted neighbors at your home. Really appreciate getting the word out. And again, thank you for the questions. They'll be posted online um, once the CVRD has a chance to go through them all.